I told myself I'm not gonna get emotional, but I started to think that's one day that will be me being placed inside the grave as well. Hello, hello. Okay, so as you guys can see, today is just me. Usama will not be joining us because we're going to be doing a little girls talk. Um, it's just going to be me and you, me and y'all, us girls. We don't, need, we don't need them right now. So it's just going to be us. And we're going to be talking about um, the hijab and specifically my hijab story. Um, and if you guys are new here, our page is called Hiksama. Um, if you can, you know, go look at the other videos and you'll see basically a little idea of what we do. We have travel vlogs, um, just little chit chats and challenges. Um, so if you guys are interested, just go and subscribe and then turn on your post notifications to see more videos. Okay, so let's begin. So the reason I do want to talk about my hijab story is because I do have a platform um, here on my Instagram and our TikTok channel because I do have a lot of people that look up to me a lot of young women specifically um, and they may be struggling with putting on the hijab or um, they may be struggling while they have it on um, and contemplating potentially taking it off so I just want to basically tell you guys my story um, and because I, I actually haven't been wearing the scarf for long I've been wearing it I would say four three to four years now I'm not sure um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm fairly new to it as well. I mean, it does come with this struggle. So I just really wanted to share my story and hopefully inspire someone, um, to maybe wanting to put it on. All right. So let me begin by telling you guys a little bit of background about myself. Um, so I was born in Ethiopia, as some of you may know, and I came here when I was two years old. My dad is born Muslim and my mom converted to Islam. Um, so I was born Muslim. Um, okay. So, let the story begin. <laughs> I'm so awkward. Without Osama, I can't do this. This is not for me, you know? Like, this is really hard. Anyways, moving on, let's, let's do this. Okay, so I was raised in Atlanta, Georgia for majority of my childhood. Um, and then we moved to the suburbs, like in high school. Um, and in high school, I was just kind of doing my thing. Like, I don't know, I was just, I was just, I don't know how to explain it. I was just living life, I guess. And I wasn't taking things seriously in high school. But fast forward, um, in college, when I was in college, I went to the University of Georgia. And my sophomore year of college, I decided I wanted to study abroad. It was in Australia and New Zealand for a Maymester, which was about a month long or so. And we went there and we just kind of hopped around between city to city um, every three to four days. And it was also during the month of Ramadan as well. So I remember fasting um, during that time. And it was just like very different from what I, what I was used to, obviously, because I didn't spend that Ramadan with my family. I spent it with strangers half across the world. I went there and it was honestly the most amazing experience I could have ever had. Um, I saw so many things that kind of opened some open my eyes like I feel like when I was here I kind of was ungrateful in a sense to the things around me like all of this creation all of this beauty it was all around me but it took me going to somewhere else to really think about it if that makes sense I don't even know I'm just kind of babbling but um so I went over there and it was it was just so beautiful like we went, we saw the Great Barrier Reef, we saw these massive waterfalls, these secluded areas where it's just no nothing but nature. And the animals, the beautiful creation of Allah, like it was just, it was mesmerizing. Like I never saw anything like that in my life. And it kind of really made me think, like it made me think kind of like, what am I doing with my life, you know? And when I got back here, when I got back to America, after that month long, you know, without my family and my friends, you know, I started kind of thinking a lot about life, if that makes sense. So I started thinking about life a lot. I started researching more about Islam as well. Even though I was born Muslim, you know, I felt like I needed to know more and I needed to know for myself because a lot of what we, a lot of what we were doing was just, you know, what our parents taught us. So I kind of wanted to find out things for myself and kind of understand why we do the things we do understand you know wh what is the reason for all of this and all of my questions I, I was just looking up and I was just trying to figure out how to be a better Muslim um, and one of the most fundamental things that I feel like 
propelled me into my journey was making sure I was making my daily salat. So this is kind of like that, it's kind of like two different stories in one, but I started kind of realizing like, okay, I need to, this is a priority in my life, you know? These things are a priority. It's not, it's not like, oh, this is one separate thing of my life and everything else is two separate things. Islam needs to be my life. Like it needs to be, in, my life needs to revolve around Islam. So I, I started praying more. I would try to pray, let's say my first, let's say Fajr was a struggle for me, right? So I would try to make sure I was praying my other Salats. After I got that down pack, I was praying. I was like, okay, now you can add Fudger. Now you can now you can take those steps. Now you can build upon what you're doing because it was very hard for me. So I started praying more. I started getting to that point where I was praying all of my daily prayers. And it felt it felt really good. I was praying those things. Am I praying those things? <laughs> I was praying my daily prayers, um, all of them, which is the bare minimum. But it is a struggle for all of us, right? So I was praying all of them and I can slowly see other things in my life kind of coming into place, if that makes sense. So me, me starting with Salah, me starting with praying five times daily made me not want to do certain things, if that makes sense. Made me kind of stay away from the things I may have been involved in in the past. And it kind of made me think about putting on my hijab more. It kind of made me think about what am I doing as a Muslim? What am I doing for my akhirah? So I really started thinking about a lot of things in my life and it kind of felt like it was like once I got my salat in check, everything else was kind of like just falling into place. Um, so I remember when it came to my scarf, it was like, I'm, I'm skipping a lot of things. So this was, um, this was May, like I said, I studied abroad in May of, I believe, 2019. I came home, I started, you know, practicing more and more, started falling in love with the religion more and more, myself on my own, which I think is very important um, for us to do. And then, like I said, five daily prayers, it was like, it, it became to the point where it was like second nature to me, not something that was hard to do. And then fast forward, I believe, so it was the end of 2019. Um, I... I already knew my now husband, I already knew him, and I knew his family, and I was very involved like with his family. And a lot of, like honestly, I don't think anyone knows this except for him, that the experience that I had is what led me to starting to putting on the hijab. So a lot of people don't know this. Um, when his grandmother passed away, that is when I, decided that I need to put my hijab on. And I'm gonna explain like the events that led to that. So the day of her uh, janaza, it was a very emotional day obviously for the entire family. Um, and we, like I was there basically. I was there to support. Um, we weren't married yet at the time, but I was there to kind of, you know, be that support um, and kind of, you know, I don't even know, like when someone passes away and you know them, you know their families, you're going to you're gonna be there, right? So I was there, I went to the janaza, and all I remember is, so we already made the salat for her, and we went, they went to go bury her. So I didn't, I didn't go all the way where her gravesite was, but I was kind of like in the back, kind of like, a little far away but I could see and literally I saw them placing her inside the grave and my mind just kind of like it just went it I told myself I'm not gonna get emotional but I started to think that's one day that will be me one day I'm gonna be being placed inside the grave as well just as she was and it's kind of you know obviously it's like she's the one who passed away but when you see those things you think about yourself right so it was very emotional it was really really emotional the whole family was you know going through what they were going through and and i remember just going inside the mosque because it was time to pray um 
and I prayed myself a lot and I just started crying like crying like crying like like I never cried before and I don't know what what why you know I didn't know like obviously you know someone just passed away but it was it was more than that I was crying for for her and also for myself and I remember just making dua to Allah like just help me help me figure out what's missing help me help me make those necessary steps that I need to make and nobody nobody knew because I was like in my little corner just bawling out but nobody nobody knew it was just really emotional for me it was very very emotional and I remember how emotional it was for his family as well and it was just it was just an eye-opening day and no I don't think anyone knows this his family doesn't know this or anything but that after that day I, I you know I was just thinking I was thinking so hard about the hijab and then I remember that following week his family was having a get-together um, after she passed and his family is a mixture so some of them are Muslim and some of them are Christians and I remember getting ready to go there I literally like got dressed did my hair everything like I was ready to go and I just remember seeing this scarf just sitting like literally randomly in my closet because at that time I only had scarves to pray right and they would just be like those weird pattern scarves like that you don't really wear out <laughs> so um, I remember seeing a scarf that was different it was a blue scarf like a light blue scarf and it was just sitting in the corner and then I remember just looking at it like just put it on just try it like what what is gonna hurt you just put it on see what it looks like like my hair was already done right so I go and I grab the scarf and I just I just wrap it the way I wrapped it I don't even want to start because it was really bad I wouldn't even wear that scarf now like the material was just not it like I, I I learned a little since then but I just put it on and I looked in the mirror and I told myself why don't you go like this like go like this to the family event like I said it was a mis it was a mixture of Muslims and Christians there um, but it was like go like what what what's gonna happen just go just try it out so I left the house with a scarf on for the first time on my own like with like my choice I went out the house with my scarf on and I went um, I met them at his family's house and I remember he even was like looking at me kind of like oh wow like you you wore the scarf wow that's nice like that's really nice and I was like yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but I, didn't, I wasn't really talking about it. I just kind of showed up in it, you know? And after that, like, I remember thinking about it because I was like, I went, I had the scarf on and nothing happened. Like nothing happened. No one said anything. No one was, it wasn't weird. It wasn't like, what are you wearing? Like, what, what is what's going on? It was just, it was just like it was normal. And I think a fear was, that I would be seen differently you know it was the middle of a school like I think it was that at that point I was a junior in college and it was the middle of the the school year um but I think a fear was like the people that I know already how would they think of me after this which is valid it's it's valid in a sense that people have these fears right but we have to remember that we're not here to please the creation we are here to please Allah and that was a constant battle that I had to have with myself. So after that day, after I wore that, nothing happened like what my, I guess what my fears were. I just kind of was like, okay, I need to, I wore it, right? I need to just keep wearing it. I need to just keep doing it. Like what's, go what's gonna happen? Like what's gonna happen? What's the worst that can happen if I just wear it every now and then, right? So I started wearing it and I was wearing it and mind you, it was not perfect. Like. I was wearing it like different styles like I would wrap it sometimes and because I didn't understand like I didn't understand hijab all the way because I just started wearing the hijab so but I was wearing it nonetheless I was taking those steps I was taking those steps and then finally I was like that's it I'm not I have it on I'm not taking it off I told myself I have it on I'm not taking it off and I kept making dua to Allah please let me keep this on please let me please let me get better I kept doing that. I kept I kept on. And ever since I just 
I just never took it off. I never had the desire to. And ever since, it has been a progress in the making. So like I said, I started off with, so I would, I would wear the scarf, but if when I wrapped it a certain way, I would feel like it looked ugly. So I needed to pull it back a little sometimes. It'll just be like back, like going back like this, like my neck out or something like that. Um, or it would just be wrapped like loosely or something like that. But that was me beginning. That was me starting off from what I didn't, you know, what I didn't know or how, like, I didn't know how to dress yet. I didn't know what the norm was or what was acceptable or not because I just started, right? So, but I started. That's what, that was what is important. I started that step. So slowly after me starting that step, I started buying clothes from different places now, right? I started looking at my closet and saying like, oh, okay, I don't think this is appropriate for me to wear with my hijab. And I actually sold a lot of my clothes. Like you could, you could ask anyone from college, like I was selling my clothes like it was nothing. Like I was like free for all, everyone coming by and I was buying new things. Um, but even those new things, like I wouldn't wear those things now because it's been a progress in the making. Like I realized, okay, when it's not just the scarf on my head, but it's also what I'm wearing, what, you know, everything else that I'm wearing as well. So it was a slow process to get me to the point where, you know, I like I was not wearing tight clothes with the scarf and all of that thing, all of those. Um, but it was a process. And that's I think that's what we fail to understand that hijab is a process it is a it is a beautiful thing but it can be hard it can be a struggle and as long as you're trying as long as you have that intention to be better not like oh i'm gonna just wear it like this because i want to and i don't care not like that but you knowing okay i do have some faults in my scarf i do have some i mean, in my hijab i do have some faults but i'm working towards fixing those i'm working towards progressing i'm working towards being a better muslim that is all that it's the intention right it's the intention that matters so even now like i am not where i want to be yet right so i am wearing like i am trying to wear my loose abayas and wearing like you know loose like if i'm wearing pants i wear like loose pants and whatnot but i'm still not where i want to be right i want to i want to be i want to i want to get better it's always getting better it's always about um being in competition with yourself to make yourself better to pleasing Allah. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it is a journey and we all need to recognize that if we don't take that first step, if we keep saying tomorrow, tomorrow, we are not promised tomorrow. And this is not just with the hijab, it's with everything. If you're not praying um, your five times daily prayer, think about it. You know, think about, do I have tomorrow? Maybe not. Maybe I do, you know, and maybe you will, but we don't know. Allah knows. We don't know. So take those steps with anything in your life, any single thing in your life. It can even not be related to um, praying or wearing the scarf, but take those steps with anything you want in your life. Take it and don't push it off for tomorrow because we don't know if we have tomorrow. It's all about those those little steps you take like to get you to where you want to be. Like even if you are perfecting your prayers or you wear your hijab or whatever the case may be, do more. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we never should be complacent where we're at. We're, we never should be like, okay, I'm good. I'm good to go. Like, I don't got nothing else to do. Like, I am perfect because we're not. We are not perfect. There are a lot of things that every one of us need to work on. And also, wearing the hijab while thinking you're better than someone else, no. <laughs> it's not. That's not... That's not what it's supposed to be. Arrogance will ruin everything. Ar arrogance is, is the worst thing you can have. If you are wearing the hijab and you are looking at down at on others, thinking that you're better than them because you wear the hijab, no. You need to, you need to rethink all of that. The hijab is not just this piece of scarf on our heads. It is how we carry ourselves. It is... Um, it is our characters. It is how we treat other people. It is more than just a simply putting a scarf on your head. And just because someone is not wearing the hijab doesn't mean that they are not trying or they are not, you know, just as good of, good of a Muslim as someone who may be wearing the hijab. Someone who may be wearing the hijab may not be praying five times a day um, or doing their obligations and 
someone who's not wearing a hijab may be doing that. We don't know. We just, we kind of, I, I do notice a lot of people judge on the outward. So what they see, like if they see a woman covering in hijab, they just assume that that woman is better than the woman who doesn't. But we don't know what's in the hearts, right? We don't know what's in the heart. We don't know what struggles certain people are facing. So we always need to remain humble. We always need to kind of think about how we are treating others because we can never say we are better than anyone. Never, ever, ever. Like, stay away from that. And if you are doing that, really rethink. You need to, you need to do a little, a little reevaluation of things. Anyways, I just want you guys to know that no matter what you're doing in your life, no matter what sin you feel like you're committing, no matter how unworthy you feel, don't ever feel like because you're doing these things, you cannot pray or you cannot... Um, better yourself, um, better your religion, better your deen, build a relationship with Allah because Allah is the most forgiving, He's the most merciful. If you are genuinely sincere and want forgiveness for something that you are doing, He is most, the most forgiving and the most merciful. But do not shut yourself out from being able to pray just because I do this, I can't pray. That is a common trick of shaitan and that is why a lot of us don't take that next step to building our relationship with Allah. So just think of it as not, oh, I'm not worthy enough to pray or wear the hijab. Think of it as me praying, me wearing the hijab will help me get rid of all of these other sins that I may be committing. It'll help me progress and become a better person. So I do hope that this helped you guys in some way. Um, and please leave a notification of what you thought of this video. And you know, sorry, a notification. <laughs> Please leave a comment of what you thought of this video um, and make sure to like and turn on your post notifications for more. And I think I might do more um, chit chats with you guys just about, you know, some of the struggles that we go through or just anything like whatever you want to see. Let me know in the comments and make sure to turn your post notifications on. And probably in the next video, Sam will be back if you guys missed him. He'll be back. He'll be back. But I don't know. I think I'm the star of the show. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Because I, this was a struggle filming this video without him. Like, he gives me a little support to, to film these things. But, but anyways, all in all, thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned for our next video. Bye.